What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman, and coming up on today's show, we are going to be talking about bringing back Lori Markinen as his future in Utah seems a little bit uncertain, and we got to talk about it. Patrick Williams, should the Bulls bring it ba- bring him back? Teams like fans are, you know, really split on that answer if they should resign. Patrick Williams this offseason. We'll get to that in the second half of today's show. But first off, talking about Laurie Markkinen. This is extremely unlikely for the Bulls to pull off this trade, but I think it would be fun to talk about him as he has turned himself into one of the better players that we see in the NBA. I mean, this past season, Laurie was fantastic for the Utah Jazz, almost shooting 40% from downtown, averaging 23 points a game, and has truly turned himself into one of the best stretch fours or fives we see in the NBA. And obviously, you know, due to his athletic ability, he's actually not that bad of a defender as he once was in Chicago as, you know, he was terrible back then, but he's really turned his career around, you know, going to Cleveland and obviously being traded to Utah. But some more deep analytics on Laurie from this past season. His catch and shoot three numbers were fantastic at 41.4. Pull up midi percentage only took about one per game, but that was at 38%. Pretty good there. Less than 10 feet, free throw line down. He was really good there as well at 60%. But I do want to show you guys this shot chart for Laurie Markinen. And uh, where you see the darker shade of blue is where he was above the league average at. So from the top of the key, when he is popping to that spot, He is one of the best in the league. That's actually at 46% on the year. In the right corner, he was also at, or left corner, he was at 46% as well, which normally makes sense as righty shoot better from that corner. But overall, uh, on the three-point arc, he was fantastic shooting the ball this whole year. As you guys see, he barely took any pull-up middies this past season, but he is a definition of a pick-and-pop uh, stretch four that we have in the NBA and he has really just turned himself into being one of the better players we see and this is a trade idea that I cooked up and uh, I'm really not sure even this gets it done but you're going to have to overpay for Laurie Markin and as the Jazz have you know there have been no reports about them being you know willing to trade Laurie this offseason but hey you uh, throw in Nikola Vucevic to match salary is obviously that is my number one priority this summer is moving off Vooch but you would have to throw in two future first round picks and pick 11, in my opinion. I think the Jazz are going to want an overwhelming haul for Lori. And, you know, I would do this deal in a heartbeat. I just don't know if the Jazz would accept this contract. But some more deep stats on Lori Markinen. So points per spot-up possession. This is every time he is catching the ball on that pick and pop and he has a defender closing out on him. He ranked pretty well. He was averaging 1.12 uh, points per spot of possession, which was in the 71.3 uh, percentile in the whole league. And points per post-up, he never really had, or he didn't have too many uh, post-up possessions this past season, but he did average a point per post-up, which ranked 63.2% across the whole NBA. But Lori Markinen was talking about extending with the Utah Jazz as he is entering the final year of his deal. And, you know, looking back on uh, that deal he signed with the Bulls, I believe it was for about four for 55, I believe, which was pretty damn uh, pretty good deal and the Bulls obviously never got to take advantage of that but he said I've seen the NBA part of people turning down extensions or signing them too early I've kind of seen everything so I've got to sit down and think about it and that's kind of where Lori's thoughts are at right now but listen the Bulls in terms of where they are at in trading for a guy like Lori Markinen, like this would be a move where if like the Bulls you know were the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference and they were really like one big time player away from making that championship run. Lori Markin is that type of player, but I still think if he is available and the Utah Jazz even want to just kick back this rebuild a couple more years, I actually think the Bulls could offer him, you know, their first round picks as the Jazz probably view those and most of the NBA views those views those picks as pretty damn valuable. So, you know, very unlikely that the Bulls are able to, you know, pull off this trade for Lori Markin and as as we know the Bulls have you know, probably made the least amount of you know trades or roster moves out of all major sports over the past couple of seasons. But still, if he's available, I would definitely make that call. But you guys, let me know: Would you accept this trade for Lori Markinen of giving up Nikola Vucevic, a 20 uh, your first round pick this year, and 26 and 28 first round picks? Or if you're a Jazz fan watching today's show, would you accept this trade? Give me an A for accept or a D for decline. Coming up next on the show, I do want to explain my thoughts on why I personally would bring back 
Patrick Williams is I am not in the camp of saying that we should just rip that Band-Aid off and just get rid of him and start over. But I'll explain my thoughts on that here in a second. But first off, guys, got to tell you about today's presenting sponsor, and that is Prize Picks. If you guys download the Prize Picks app and use promo code CLNS, when you're making your first deposit, we will match it up to $100. That is promo code CLNS when you're making your first deposit. We will match it up to $100. And with prize picks, you could turn $10 into $1,000 in a single game watching your favorite sports this summer. You can make a prize picks lineup in as little as 30 seconds. You just need to pick more or less on two to six player stat projections, and you're locked in. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become a part of the prize picks community today. And with NBA Finals getting kicked off next Thursday, I already have a lineup created for uh, the Dallas Mavericks and Boston Celtics game is I'm going to take the more on Daniel Gafford's six rebounds. I'm going to take the more on Derek White, 14 and a half points. Then I'm going to fade Jason Tatum in this lineup and take the less on his 27 and a half points there. But hey, if you guys want to fade these picks or ride with these picks, we just suggest you guys do do so at Prize Picks. So download the Prize Picks app, use promo code C. LNS. That's promo code CLNS when you're making your first deposit, and we'll match it up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. It's Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports. All right, let's talk about Patrick Williams. As this is one of the more polarizing topics across Bulls media members, Bulls Twitter. As you know, fans kind of seem to be split in the middle on the former fourth overall pick. But checking out what he did over the last four seasons for Chicago was dealing with injuries this past year and in 2021, both season ending injuries. But when he has been healthy, he has played a lot of basketball. And I kind of like that. Uh, just kind of all mindset that he has on, you know, wanting to play, you know, all 82 games, for example, in 2022. Um, I just kind of, I just like that about Patrick Williams. But his three-point shot over his career has definitely been my biggest kind of, um, my biggest shocker because coming out of Florida State, like that was his biggest concern was that three-point shooting ability. But shooting almost 40% over, uh, over his NBA career so far has just been absolutely fantastic. But I do want to take a deeper look on Patrick Williams as, you know, the advanced stats do not do him, you know, too kindly. You know, same thing we were talking about points per spot up for Laurie Markinen where he was at 1.12. Well, Patrick Williams is actually at 0.93 points per spot up possession which ranked him 29.5th percentile in the league. Points per pick and roll when he is the ball handler, he averaged 0.85 points per uh, pick and roll, which is 49.7. Then points per cut, he was still on the lower half at 1.1 points per cut, which was 19.9 uh, percentile in the entire NBA. But the more on uh, Patrick Williams here, I just, well, I'm a believer on him, is we have shown, or he has shown the ability to get better every single year. And, you know, his catch and shoot, uh, catch and shoot three point percentage, very solid. At 38.8, you would take that for a three and D wing. Pull up three point percentage, only took one a game last season, but it was fantastic at 48.5%. Pull up midi was at 44.8, which he's obviously shown an ability, you know, to hit that at a high clip. And then, you know, from the free throw line down, actually not too good. Uh, at 48. 0.9% would expect that to be higher with obviously, you know, his athletic ability. But I got four reasons on why I would keep him. <laughs> I was shocked when I looked this up because, you know, I'm 24 years old and I thought Patrick Williams was the same age I was, but he's actually 22. And that is my biggest reason on why to keep him. He's already played four years in the NBA. He's turning 23 here in a couple of months, but he's still 22 years old, super, super young. And overall, his archetype on the basketball floor it's just a winning archetype. Like, we look at guys like, you know, P.J. Washington, what he's doing for Dallas, what Jaden McDaniels did for Minnesota, uh, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, what he did uh, also for Minnesota this year, those long 3 and D wings who can knock down a three in the flow of the offense but also be an elite defender on that side of the floor. I think those types of guys, like, no matter where you see it in the NBA – further we get in the playoffs like those types of players have shown an ability you know for their games to translate in each and every round and also I just think he needs a chance to develop like you know we saw the jump that Kobe White and Ayo DeSumo made once Zach Levine was out through the injury we saw their uh, usage rate go up they were just getting more shots in the flow of the offense and we saw them take that next step in their game I think Patrick Williams is in a very similar situation that's why I'm in the camp. I want the Bulls to, you know, even though DeMar DeRozan's been fantastic for Chicago, he's been a great leader and he's been a great mentor for these young guys, 
But I just think if he would leave this team, it would just allow Patrick Williams just to get more shots in the offense. I think that would help him to develop, you know, uh, immensely over the next couple of years, and also his work ethic. Like, we have heard reports from, you know, beat reporters that cover the Bulls that he is one of the hardest working guys, you know, out there uh, in the NBA and just, you know, watching his ability to improve his three-point shot since coming out of college, he has clearly shown an ability to develop his game. So I got four reasons why the Bulls should keep him, but, hey, obviously, you know, fans are pretty split on him as, you know, the nickname, a passive P, and him just not, you know, living up to that fourth overall selection I think has rubbed uh, Bulls fans the wrong way. But keep it simple. He's a six foot seven forward, long wingspan, can defend at a high level, and he's shown ability to shoot the ball at a high clip as well. But you guys let me know. What are your thoughts on Patrick Williams? Uh, comment down below your thoughts on 44 and also guys make sure you are subscribed here to the bulls report by chat sports really appreciate it if you guys haven't already lock us in as you go to bulls youtube channel this summer thank you guys so much for watching see you next time go bulls